Welcome to our lecture online. This type of problem often confuses the student. Here what we have is a scale with a beaker and some liquid on top, assuming the liquid is water. And notice that we have an object suspended above there but not making any contact, which means that the weight as measured by the measuring scale here will be equal to the weight of the beaker plus the weight of the liquid, which is indicated right here. The total weight here, W, is simply the weight of the beaker plus the weight of all the liquid inside the beaker. Now what happens when we have the object that's suspended from a string and we bring it down so that a portion of it is inside the liquid? Let's assume for a moment that the density of the object is greater than the density of the liquid, so therefore if the string wasn't there it would simply sink to the bottom. What are we going to read on the scale here? Well notice that there will be an additional buoyancy force pushing up against the object here simply because we've suspended it. Hmm. All right. But then what is that buoyancy force equal to? That buoyancy force, how does that appear on the scale? Well, it turns out that additional buoyancy force, the force pushing back against the object, reducing the tension of the object, which used to be equal to the weight of the object, so this was equal to the mg of the object. That is now being reduced by the buoyancy force, the amount of force that of the liquid pushing back against the object. And let's call that the buoyancy force 1. And of course, buoyancy force 1 can be defined as being equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is equal to the mg of the liquid, which is equal to the rho vg of the displaced liquid. So the amount of liquid that this object displaces by being partially submerged in the liquid, that's going to be the buoyancy force, and that is going to be the additional reading on the scale down here, and the tension at the top is being reduced by the same amount. So that means that the total of the tension as measured by the string, or measuring the tension on the string, and the weight here, those two combined will always equal the same amount together. It's always going to be T plus W. If we now look at this, notice if we add these two together, again we get T plus W because the minus BF1 here will cancel out the plus BF1 there. Let's find out what that is also equal to in terms of the amount that's suspended here. So let's say that the distance down into the liquid is equal to X, and notice that the height of the cube is equal to h. I drew them a little bit too small, but imagine that this height here is equal to h, and the amount suspended in the liquid is x, and of course, the density of the liquid is rho. Now what we can say is that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is the rho vg of the displaced liquid. So in this case, this is going to be equal to the density of the liquid, times the volume of the object below the surface of the liquid, which is going to be L squared for the cross-sectional area at the top, times x, that's the volume suspended in the liquid, times g. And that is what we're going to be seeing here for buoyancy force 1. Now what happens when we continue to lower the object until the entire object is suspended inside the liquid? Notice we have now reached the total buoyancy force allowed or allowed, not allowed, but the total buoyancy force offered up by the liquid. So now, since more of the cube is inside the liquid, suspended inside the liquid, there's more liquid being displaced, the buoyancy force is now greater. The buoyancy force, again, is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is equal to mg of the liquid, which is equal to rho vg of the displaced liquid. The only difference is that now there's more displaced liquid. How much more? Well, you can say that the buoyancy force total, whoop, and I should say buoyancy force one there, buoyancy force total is equal to rho vg of the displaced liquid. But now in this case, instead of only displacing this much liquid, now we displace L square h, the entire volume of the cube times g which now means that the weight we measure on the scale is now increased to the weight of the beaker in the water plus the buoyancy force total on the cube. So this is BF total. 
and the weight on the string is now being reduced by the BF total, so T minus BF total is now the weight on the string, which, by the way, what do we call that? We call this the apparent weight of the cube. And then you can see that the weight as measured by the scale here will be the weight of the beaker, the weight of the water, which is equal, I should say, to the weight of the displaced liquid. And again, notice when you add these two together, they again add up to tension plus the weight. And that's how we can make sense out of situations like this, where we have an object partially submerged or completely submerged in the liquid, where the whole thing, the beaker, the liquid, is on top of a scale. And you can see that the amount of weight as measured by the scale keeps on increasing as you submerge more and more and more of the object inside the liquid. And that's how we can make sense out of it.